following interview was conducted uh, with Thomas E. Graham, Bachelor of Science in Agriculture 1942 for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Friday the 12th uh, month of December 12th, 2008. Um, the interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome. And also sitting in is his wife, Jeanette, and I thank you and I welcome both of you. Welcome. And thank you. We're happy to be here. Okay. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and early years. Well, I, I was born in 1920. Now, it's not 1820, it's 1920. So, the, where I was born was Petoskey, Michigan, because that's where grandfather uh, had a summer place and mother and dad and all his, his two other brothers, they were all up there. And I was born in Petoskey, Michigan. Our home was in Washington, Indiana at that time. And it's still in Washington, Indiana, but we have moved a lot. And my father and his brothers, his two brothers, were in the glass business and they sold out to Libby Owens Ford. They're the one, Dad and his two brothers are the ones that invented making a, bo a bottle with a machine, not blowing it by hand. And they could blow it upside down and that solved the problem of taking the cap off of a Coca-Cola and having it break the neck of the bottle. And they did so well with that. And then they sold that business to Libby Owen for glass. Then they went, after that, they went to the truck business in Evansville. And along with uh, Horace Dodge and the Dodge Company, they worked out to have some of the finest trucks. And they were the largest in the world at that time, which wasn't very big. But that's what they did. And after that, they sold that out. They retired, and they couldn't stand that retirement. So they went to the automobile business, and they made the Graham automobiles until 1941 or 1939, when the factory stopped production of automobiles and made uh, uh, vehicles for the armed services. And, and Dad was in real estate and had a lot of fun doing a lot of different things, but that's the synopsis as close as I can get it okay. for what he and his two brothers did. And I have two, three brothers, and the three, four of us were in the business in Washington, Indiana, especially right after I graduated and got out of the Navy. Okay. Tell us a little about high school. Did you go to high school in Washington as well? I went to high school in Washington, D.C., Georgetown Prep. And uh, it was a wonderful experience and a great school. And uh, I have a lot of nice friends. <laughs> And still some from then. We're all getting pretty old, though. Oh, no, I each day gets to get younger. 38, yes. you know, that's been back yeah. a long time ago. And then after um, high school, where did you came to Purdue. How did you have to select Purdue? And tell us a little about your college life when you were here at Purdue. Well, I went to school out east. And I was miserable. And I didn't know why. And... The doctors didn't know why. But about 25 years later, I found out that it was mold. The school I went to was in Worcester, Massachusetts. It was a Catholic school and a real good school. I liked everything, but all of a sudden, I could not operate. I could not think right. I, could, I, was, I was just lost. And I quit and went home, and uh, I got better right away. 
and everybody was wondering, now what's wrong? And uh, nobody figured it out for quite a few years to know that I'm allergic and still allergic to mold so bad that uh, I stay out of it. I'm real serious about that. Oh, yeah. So when I was looking for a school that summer, and uh, Dad and I came up here, and uh, the ag school just interests me just tremendously. So I enrolled, and it has been fun all ever since. And I, I think Purdue is just wonderful. I have my doubts about some of the things that they get off on tangents, and uh, but I'm sure they'll come through. They're doing fun. What was campus like? Did, were you in a fraternity? I was a Phi Gam. Okay. And uh, first year I was in Cary Hall. Oh, it was brand new then. And it was very nice. And then I moved to the Phi Gam house, and uh, we just had a good time. Jeanette was a Theta, and I met her later on in years, but while we were in school. You met her here at Purdue? Oh, yeah. Okay. And we had a lot of mutual friends, and we still have a lot of mutual friends, and it's it's hard to keep up with them because we don't have many friends anymore. <laughs> They're all they've all left us. <laughs> well, the group, the circle is still there though, which is nice. Yeah, and it's it's. Was uh, Doctor Butts here when you were here? Oh okay. yes. Okay, so I was knew he Earl was, Butts real well. Was he uh, one of your uh, instructors? I had him in school, okay. and then I had him what later. What about Lowell Harden? Was he here at that time? Lowell Harden? was not. Okay. Uh, his brother was. Oh okay. His, his brother. Fendler. Well, Dave, da Fendler. Dave, Dave Fendler. Fendler. Was yeah, here. Dave was wonderful to me. He he. You see, I was in the ag school. Which is but in the Ag Administration I, across campus there. So oh, yeah, building, but right. I had oh, grown up in Detroit because of the automobile business. And I didn't know anything about farming, but it fascinated me. It still fascinates well, honey, me. Well, you forgot to say there was a farm there. It we have a farm. six generations yeah. they were farming, but not involved personally. Okay. But we had the farm okay. in Washington, Indiana, Davis okay. County. Okay. And it just, the whole thing just still fascinates me. Good. What a good job the Purdue Agricultural School does. Now, and I, I, can, I can prove all that. I know it. What sort of farm do you have? What do you, what do you raise? Well, we have two farms. One is a clay soil east of town. And that soil is the foothills of the Alleghenies Mountains. And the other farm is west of town. And it's a sandy loam. And that's the prairie farm. It, it, it'll it grow prairie grasses and things that uh, the other one won't. And they, they just work together beautifully. But there's a, there's a line through the city of Washington, the town of Washington, I should say. And that... Yeah, our yard today is clay, and you can go two blocks, and man, it's sand. I mean, it, you interesting. Could, you yeah. could grow prairie grass, no problem, just two blocks away. It's real interesting. Yeah. It's it's something that very few people understand or know or care. I don't care about that. My brothers don't care about that. And, and just I'm a little different with that. That sounds stuff. good. Okay. Then well, after you got out of, um, did, is that when you went into the service? Was it after you got out of? No, after I came up here and I was here until f 42 December, okay. and I'd already signed up in the Navy and I left here. At, right after graduation, I I reported to Abbott Hall, Abbott Hall Northwestern for officers training school. And I was there three, three, months. three months. And then I moved out quickly. <laughs> <laughs> where, where did you serve then during the war? 
Well, I, I uh, went to a few more schools on Staten Island while they were finding transportation for me to get to the LST 377. And that's the only ship I was assigned to during the whole war. And I was on LST 72. And we started out from Norfolk looking for North Africa and Britain and all those kind of places. And I say, we, because I was a passenger, but to break the monotony, I also worked with the officers there, learning an awful lot. And um, there weren't very many people that had ever been out of sight of land before on that ship. And we found it. We Africa. found the Mediterranean. And uh, we got down. Just kept the moving along, right? <laughs> oh yeah, we we well, see we wide open. We were going about nine, ten knots, so it, it wasn't a fast trip. And we were in a convoy, and it did fine. When we got over to North Africa and Bizerti, went into that nice harbor there, and uh, I was transferred to LST three seventy seven. It was short of officers, and uh, I left 72, but then I was on 377 then until the very end, and uh, we made the invasions, and we were usually first in and more in, and along with about 30 other LSTs, and uh, we ended up with Normandy. And after the invasion of Normandy, and we'd make a trip, you know, after you take the men in, the army in, you've got to go back and forth taking supplies in. So we would travel at night, we'd leave Normandy, and we'd go to London or someplace along, pick up from England, we'd pick up a, a load of whatever they need, and they had that all figured, and then we'd haul that over the next night unload during the daytime, load during the daytime, travel at night. So that went on for a month or so. And a after that, why, we were sent home with a few other LSTs, but by ourselves. And when we got home, we went to Mobile, Alabama, where they were going to upgrade the ship and fix it. And do a lot of things to it that it needed. Um, we were through with the war in Europe. The war ended on our way home. We thought, oh boy, that that this is great. But we reported back to the ship in 30 days, and we all had enough points that we didn't have to go out again as individuals. So we lined up the crew and said, now look, we're going, we've got orders to leave, and uh, anybody doesn't want to go, you don't have to. So we thought, we're smart, boy, we don't have a crew that can't send us out and everything. Man, they sent us up the river, and we took on enough fuel to run around the world, and that, that Number two diesel, number one, real, real, real thick stuff. It was awful, but we filled it up. And, uh, we don't have anything. You know, about the next afternoon, sitting there, along came about five paddy wagons, and we picked up a brand new crew, except for about fifteen or twenty, right out of prisons or some place. They had uh, their little books of what they did were so wide you couldn't believe it. But we got along fine. We just did great and they're nice guys and they just had gotten on the wrong foot and they were in jail, that's all. <laughs> so then they went to the Pacific. So then we went to the Pacific and we were in the South Pacific and then came up through New Zealand and through the Solomons and went to Hawaii, 
And during our repair, somebody had dropped a rag in one of the generators, and we had that fixed and a couple other minor things, and we were doing all right. We ended up in Tokyo Bay for the end of the war. And lo and behold, I met my oldest brother there. He was in the Air Force in that uh, group that were behind the lines with their bases and stuff. So he came aboard and just, we had a great time for about two or three days. And then he went back to his outfit and uh, it wasn't long until I got my orders. <coughs> and I said goodbye to the LST well, 377. They dropped, the bomb. they dropped the bomb, so you didn't they have to go in. Thank God for Mr. President Truman. Hoover. Truman. Um, Truman. And he made that decision and he <laughs> dropped that bomb. And I met my brother in Japan. I had commandeered a Jeep and a driver, and he was in a Jeep, and we met on a one-way street. But I'll never forget looking out. As far as you could see, everything was blown out. This is in Tokyo? This was in, this was in the area of Tokyo Harbor. I don't know. I never did see a map of the whole rest of it, so I don't really know where we were, except we were in Japan and Tokyo was there, we were in the harbor. So it, it, it was uh, very enlightening and it, it made you fearful of that bomb because there wasn't anything there, no trees, nothing. A few sticks of wood hanging up or halfway hanging up and nothing else. It was flat. It, never could you imagine such a thing. Then I got in a, I, I got on a transport, and the trip over took about three months or two months. I don't know. It seemed to me forever. But the trip back was about four days, five days. You know, moving at a good speed. And then I ran a hotel in uh, Miami. My family was down there, and it was neat being there. And it was a hotel where all of the Navy personnel would come to waiting for their orders to be discharged at certain places. So the only job we had to do was keep the place clean and keep track of everybody. So if we sent them to the horse races, we knew where we could find them because we might only have three hours to get somebody on a plane. But it all worked out. We didn't lose anybody or anything, and um, it was it was okay. Yeah. Did you were you married? Uh, no, no, we know? didn't get married until you got out of the service. Until after the I war, mean, six, and I was home. Yeah, yeah, May '46. Mm -hmm. See, that had been a year and a half after. Yeah. Did you you were in the same were in the same class? You graduated the same time, yeah, and then you went, you went back to Chicago, or yes, okay. I worked. Uh, Jeanette worked for the uh, agriculture, Department. U.S. Department of Agriculture. And I was she a was food a inspector. Mm -hmm. for food the inspector, and oh, would I have hate to have her? In my, if I had a factory, and she came in to inspect it, and then, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Well then. And then uh, went back to Washington, and I started running Graham Farms. And my older brother was uh, there, and he was running our feed mill, and elevator, uh, grain elevator, and another brother. My, I have two older brothers and one younger. Uh, was running our cheese factory, and we had three businesses, and three people, and we each had job to do and we got along fine and each one did their job and then my younger brother came and joined us and he graduated from school and got out of the Air Force um, and 
he took over our turkey business and uh, we were able to make ends meet and get along just fine. And then we retired and uh, the children took over and now they, they have sold the cheese factory. It, it, the milk supply just dried up around our area. And um, it's Amish, and they have. Uh, yeah, they they've sold it, and they've <laughs> sold some of the farms. Not very many, but in fact, we did too. We pulled our ears in way in and uh, made it a very good unit, and we still have two farms. And, and Purdue helped tremendously. Purdue, you, when you think of Purdue, you think of the campus and all of those things and the fun, and, and I'll agree to all that, but I remember the great job that the agricultural community did for the state. Their extension service? You're thinking the about? extension service and their meetings sure. and their leadership and the way they conducted their business just absolutely changed agriculture right in front of your eyes that uh, the use of fertilizer and what fertilizers to use, nitrogen, phosphate, potash, and when to use them, how to use them, and irrigation, and all of the different varieties, that that is one of the unsung uh, advantages of Purdue that uh, Everybody takes for granted and forgets it, and it's over. Because it's not like a school. Once you make this progress, the progress keeps itself going. So there aren't many farmers now like there used to be, but they raise so much more. One person, it's nothing for one person to have. 2,000 acres and do it all with the help of his wife or a young kid and they, they just do a great job. Yeah, that's right. It's changed a lot. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about being on the board of trustees. You were the alumni representative. Uh, yes. And uh, I, I think that was a great experience. Joe Rudolph was... Uh, Oh, was the uh, director the at that time? Yeah, okay. he was right. director of the alumni All association. Right. Did you tell us about? Did and the secretary was Mary Louise Skinner and mm -hmm. then Doris Pearson were the secretaries when yeah. you were Yeah, then jo Doris and and now Roseanne. All right. Okay. For, for the board of trustees, the, the the great thing to me was the men on the trustees were the greatest people. They had all done real well in business. They were fun. They had Purdue first. They believed in what Purdue did, and they believed that Purdue was indebted to the state because of the money they received and that we had to pay back to the state. And they had to have programs that helped the people of the state. They children of the state. Right. And I think we carried that on uh, as uppermost in our whole time of the, 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 the gentlemen were just a fine group of us upstanding You have people. a list of who was on, I'm sure. Yes, Roseanne keeps me up to date with that, yes, and mm -hmm. I knew that you were on. Who was, who was the chairman when you, was Hillenbrand the chairman when you were on the board? Think he ever took chairman. No, oh. Bill Maury Hillenbrand. Canore. He, Maury it was Maury Canori okay. was the one that. Uh, okay. Well, he retired and did an awful lot, and he worked just far Purdue as chairman. You were on for quite a period of time. Well, I was on for twelve years, and I just burned out. I. Had problems and uh, <coughs> I was kept not. It together. Yeah, but I was not retired. I was working and being on the board. Right. Oh yes. I mean, they. Uh, There's a lot of work 
that goes they on. They want you to come up and stay for the day and the night and the next day and the day before and the day after that. And I was working. And it was very difficult, and I couldn't keep up with that. But Did you serve on any committees? When Do you recall any committees that you served on? Was it you finance? know, I can't remember oh. committees okay. uh, as individual things, but I remember being on certain right subjects we had to look into. And for a while, I was going to fraternities and uh, different Co-ops. houses. Co-ops. Maybe something to do with housing, perhaps. I would go there for dinner and Mm -hmm. talk with them and Mm -hmm. be with them and and trying to figure out what they needed and what their program was Mm -hmm. and what their problems were. And I think we did that pretty well. And it it seemed to me that uh, it worked out now. See, what they do now, I don't know because I... One of the things that when you were on the boards, when the, the student trustee starting in 1975, yes. the first yeah. one, before, I mean, it has a vote, but before there was sort of a speaking seat. Mm-hmm. And I think I, Larry Grishauer was the first mm-hmm. student trustee. Grishauer. Grishauer, I think. Yeah, I may be mispronouncing his name. And then it was 75. Yeah, the then it was yeah. Zara. Then, um, right, we've, uh, mm-hmm. Roseanne has given me a list mm-hmm. of them, but I remember, and 75 was the first t- time when mm-hmm. the person came And that came was on. also the time of co-ed existence in the dorm. Yeah, that bugged us. That they snuck that in on us, and you know the the heads of the departments and everything, they can do things that you don't know because they're just doing a little bit at a time, and it, it just takes a few years that they're here, and, and all of a sudden you think, well, how'd that get across? But that uh, changing those dorms and having mixed in the dorms it, 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 mm-hmm. that that was hard a little different, right? we still well, don't understand it <laughs> Maury was a local man and he would have so many meetings at his home because we couldn't you couldn't talk too publicly all the time those, those were hard times because I came on in the I was going to the, the book of the trustees, 68. 68. Right. And it was in 68 that the students were trying to run the place. And, and they, were, they were out of hand. And they had sit-ins at the Union and a few other places that were just Not like terrible. Hmm? Not as bad as other schools. Not as thought. bad, but <laughs> bad for Purdue. We thought it was terrible and... Other schools, they, they can take care of their problems. But that was very hard. Mm-hmm. Yes. Very hard for uh, us to swallow. <coughs> and we got it cleared up. And uh, thank goodness for people like Butts and... and um, John Hicks? John Hicks. Yes. Real good at, at uh, keeping us on informed and doing what we thought was right, and it seemed uh, it was pretty good. Right. When you w- were on the board, Dr. Hubdy was still the president, correct? Yeah. And then mm-hmm. one of the things that probably took place while you were on the board was the, uh, his replacement, which was Dr. Hansen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, there was we, a certain we hired, around it, right? We hired Dr. Hansen, who did a, a fine job, yeah. and he was a, he was a just a nice and nice gentleman. I don't know if he's still living or not, but they he lives in Florida. I understand. Yeah, he lives down well, there. That, right. That'd be great because because he he did a lot and was easy to work with. And I just can't say enough for all the things he did for the university. Over and above being president, being president is hard. That's yeah. that's a terrible job. It is. And he was the first one that moved, lived in Westwood. That's yes. right, yeah. Because before mm-hmm. that was the house on 7th Street. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, across town. All right, that's correct. All right. Yeah, we went over there for meetings. Well, that was a gift. That from was. The vice President. Or what was? R.B. Stewart. R.B. Stewart. R.B., yeah. Or Westwood. For mm-hmm. the, yeah, uh huh. R.B. Stewart. Did you know I know. I did oh, not know R.B. Stewart, but I seems like I should because everything. He did so much for Freehafer and that gang that ran the finances. 
Mm-hmm. And was our RV was still alive when when you were on the board, was he not? Who? RV was still alive, was he not, or had he passed away? Uh, if he was, he lived in Florida. Oh, he okay. didn't come back to the. He'd already left the university. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, he he. Uh, I don't think I ever met him. I know him because I've heard about him so much, sure. and he did so much and so many good things. Right. And his wife wrote wrote a book about him too, mm. RV, which is well, a he, nice book. He, he figured out how we could build a dorm and make it affordable for the student and affordable for the people of the state and affordable for the university. And, and we kept up pretty well. But you know, when Jeanette and I came to the school, there were 6,000 students. Yeah. And the Hall of Music had just been completed and we all fit in there. Mm-hmm. And I understand now there's 40 some thousand on this campus. Well, I, I hope you keep them straight. <laughs> <laughs> we do, I'm sure. Oh, well, the other things that the board is involved in would be budget and also administrators, you will approve those. those As many what? Uh, administrators that uh, oh, are yeah. office and the deans that and, they approve and they, the appointment. They did a great job. The, the, the deans of the different schools kept those schools tight and doing fine. And it was back in those years that they started the industrial end of the thing that's going on so well now of the research campuses, they call them there. Right. Ours was now north of town, and it was growing and doing fine. But the main thing it did for the university was, you know, a professor teaching some subjects teaches the same subject every year and goes down through his file on the 15th to use this page and this, 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 and they kind of lose interest. But here, that gave them a chance to go ahead because they know so much of the groundwork that as soon as they get out of that class, they can go and they can start out on research. And it's just like a shot in the arm. And I'm so happy the way it's going now. Uh, You see, I keep up with the university. You know, I haven't been here because I I get um, about 20 pages of of typewritten (laughs) things. What's going on? And I enjoy that very much, even though I get behind once in a while. I can get caught up, and you'd be surprised how it all fits together and what they're doing. And then the last time we were here, we were invited to a meeting of the Board of Trustees. Um, Somebody was retiring. Just because somebody was retiring and that we knew them. Excuse me. And we were out at Westwood. Try I have a hard time. <coughs> we we were out, out at Westwood. And we were yeah, excuse me. <coughs> what was my point about when we went out there? For some retirement, uh, somebody on the board who was retiring. Yeah, and we were, we were so old that it was unbelievable, you know. Oh. And when they said, "Yeah, now ex trustee Graham, would you say?" It? Well, I graduated in '42. Well, their eyes almost fell out because it was only a few years back. You know, it wasn't too many years ago, and Tim was the president then, and uh, of course. Tim has done such a wonderful job, and He's uh, been a wonderful, yeah, sure. yeah. And, and I knew him. We played basketball, and uh, he he just he and Joe Rudolph and that gang, you know, they've been around here a long time. Sure. And Fred Ford, don't forget Fred and Mary. They've been yeah. killers. Fred Fred was a fine gentleman, and uh, boy was he something when it comes to in his group you know they come up with 
well, somebody is using film in their camera for something other than the university. I mean, a film back then probably cost a dollar, you know, and, right. and, and uh, oh. slides. Did, you, yeah. and, did your uh, children come to Purdue? Your children oh, did? yeah. Okay. Well, Margie Four of got, them did. How, Four of them. Four How many the, children do you have? Six. Six. <coughs> the, Our daughter got into guidance, and she was at one of the dorms here uh -huh. when she was taking the course. And then our son was in ag, and uh, we had two daughters. In the two youngest came two here. They graduated in 80 and 81 or two, mm -hmm. along there. Mm -hmm. And now they're with the business, they work within the business? They live in Washington? Down no. Three, the three of the girls live in California and one in Michigan. That's the four girls. And, and this oldest son, Tom, runs the farms at Washington, Indiana. And... Bill runs farms and other businesses that he has in Salisbury, Maryland. So we're spread out. Mm -hmm. If Jeanette and I see all the children and the grandchildren, we get to see both oceans, the Pacific and the Atlantic. <laughs> that <so>. sounds good. <laughs> uh, have you? Uh, let's talk about alumni participation. You keep active in the uh, Purdue Alumni Association. Not really. Okay. I don't uh, think there is one in Davies County. No, right? there isn't because it's county agent work. It, it's right. not the university as much as it is agriculture. And now that there aren't many farmers producing more than the whole bunch of them did before, it it's hard to keep up because the county agent works for about five counties. Oh, okay. Quite a bit more. Because there aren't many individuals to work with. Sure. So it, they, they, uh, they keep going and they're doing fine, and, but they've changed their ways because they have to. Sure, I understand. Okay. Uh, in the community in which you live, are there any particular organizations that you're involved in down there? Your community affiliations at all? I think one was soil conservation. That was the soil conservation down. went hand in hand with agronomy, sure. and we installed in, on eighteen thousand acres a flood control program that started up northeast and came down through the t Washington. And we put in eleven lakes that were flood control lakes, and we call them flood control and recreation. And a flood control means that the outlet pipe is very large, and at the top, the holes are bigger into that pipe than it, as it goes down. Otherwise, it'd be like getting out of the bathtub, and instead of pulling the plug, you tip the thing over. But this lets it come down a little bit at a time. And that stopped the floods. It allowed the county to put in tubes instead of new bridges. It allowed the county to have good roads instead of awful ones because they're not flooding every year. And it saved the crops. And soil conservation is still big and it's still working and they've changed their ways. And instead of one county, Davies County Soil Conservation like that I was the head of for about 15 years, now they have four or five counties together, which makes sense and works fine. And uh, they're doing other things, but they have a problem coming up that they're going to have to start. The lakes that were put in were 50-year lakes, and they figured in about 50 years they'd begin to fill up enough that you should go in one lake at a time and dig it back and dig it out and they'd do all 11 of them. And, uh, they haven't started that yet as far as I know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when I, I retired... In 1980, 
and I've been retired ever since, and uh, getting more tired all the time. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's getting hard to keep up with things. <laughs> I know. Uh, um, when you talked about the campus, uh, it has changed a lot. There was. Uh, you can't believe how the campus has changed. What was what was Chauncey Village like when you were here? Do you remember the village? Probably were some not the, as big. The little village west of right, right. here. It's probably a lot smaller than it is now. It's grown a lot. Well, when we drove I'd, in, it looked the same. Uh, yeah, the, the chocolate shop was still oh, there. Oh well, that yes, and that's there. And the stores. Yeah, Southwards is it? I, I'm I'm confused. No. Where is the Dosh Alumni Building? Is that? Next to the chocolate shop? No, no, no. You go down Grand Street. It's just beyond the. You just go down Grand Street. It's a block from the garage. The parking garage is in the next block. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yes. On the west or the east? Uh, you'd be going sort of south, going this way. You'd be going south, but is which side of the street? Uh, west side. Um. West side. Yeah. Because the dorms are on there. On that. But if you're talking about the little village right here off the Chauncey Village, right? It doesn't look much different. Yeah. But some of the, uh, some of, there's a couple of, like Southwards and Deeks used to be mm -hmm. there, and there used to be I guess a post office, but that's been gone long. But the gone. bank's still on that. Oh road. yes, that's all in thing. That's right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> this it's still full of students walking in any direction they want to walk at any time. That's right, exactly. <laughs> the cars better look out. And the triple X is still there. That's right. Yeah, exactly. I understand they're having a little trouble down there last week or so. <laughs> yeah, I, guess I read so. about Made the that. News, right, yeah. How about a favorite Purdue tradition do you have that you'd like to share with us? Tradition? Mm. Comes to I mind. like them all. I, okay. I can't complain. Uh, Are they still wearing corduroys, seniors? No, they don't. Do you still have your cords? <laughs> no. I Not asked really. Him. Brian Lamb still has his. Does he? Yes. I asked. I've interv I interviewed Brian, and yes, he still has his Brian. cords. Brian? Brian Lamb, you know, mm -hmm. C uh, the uh, yeah. C's fan. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I, I can't believe it, but uh, I haven't got any Navy uniforms either, <laughs> I don't think. I might have a hat in the attic, you know, in, that, in one of those cans up there. That you got, how about your cord? You got your cord skirt? No, no. <laughs> we like those because we could add them to the archives. You know, we oh, don't have many of those at all. Yeah, but we were. I wish I had the dance programs I had. I offered them to the union board one year, and they weren't interested. Oh no, we they, would have loved I, to have I them. I think I just said, "Well, just throw them away." But you know, we had a lot of things. things. Every, we had Tommy every week. Dorsey and I all heard. the good bands. Almost every week we. Party. We would One love to have those. I know, yeah. not too bad. You I know. Would, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, oh. right. I should have kept them a couple more years. Oh, they're probably in the attic. <laughs> no, they're not. I remember thinking, well, if There's they don't There's things want there that them. we don't know. It's like at my house. <laughs> right, yeah. No, we had wonderful opportunity to be there because if they went to Chicago, we were on the route back, or two. So we had all the big bands. Yeah, right. Uh, and the student union board had to get all the band fronts made and all the signs. Super. Frank Sinatra was a young, young man singing for Tommy Dorsey's band mm -hmm. in the union here. Well, it was either 42 or 41, long, long in there. It's but amazing it, you get those bands. Now it's hard even to get the groups there. It's just so expensive. I don't expensive. think there are any bands anymore. No, there are not. But even some of the groups that they like, the student concert committee, it's expensive yeah. to bring these people oh, in. Wow. Yeah, it really is. Military balls. We have oh, yeah. wonderful. Lots of things in the union. Got an outstanding event that you'd like to share with us? Events? Mm -hmm. You remember you were in charge of the horse show a couple of Mother's oh, Days. We did have a horse show once. Here on campus. Yeah, it was, on, it, it, was, uh -huh. it was out kind of west. Now there's a couple of, where that um, where athletic Park. building is. It was out there. Well, it Discovery was, Park is out State Street, you know, that's all. It was but across from the dorm, that north. Oh, I know, north. where the athletic field is, where, the inter, where they do the intermediate. Well, we had a, 
Western uh, horse show, and it, it was fun because they had a re uh, an academy, riding academy out west and a little bit uh, probably on level with the uh, airport out beyond the airport, and that was fun. Uh, I was thinking of something else that we did, and I. But if what you're saying is that there were a lot of social activities, and they were all in the union, a lot of dances and things oh, like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. The union was the hub. The fraternities would rent one of the ballrooms, and go together, and have their party there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And homecoming? Did they do the displays? They don't. They don't have the displays anymore. The fraternities and the residence halls used to do oh, those yeah. displays. Homecoming. They had every oh they, man. They don't have those anymore. Signs all over campus. Sure. Uh, Beat Iowa or somebody. Right, exactly. Uh, Red well, Mackie. they're too busy. They have to study too hard. <laughs> well, it, it kind of did come to that because the war changed everything. And we got out just the day before the, we went to war. Well, we were at war when we were here. And if we kept our grades up, we could stay until we graduated. Man, I tell you, that took a lot of fun out of it. <laughs> uh, it well, was did, they, did they have a commencement for you? Did you have a graduation ceremony? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, they did. Yeah. Okay. At, uh, in Elliot. At the music hall. On the, yeah, in Elliot. Oh, we all fit in the music hall. Oh. The whole school. <laughs> that was one advantage when our children graduated from Purdue. You got to kiss them on stage when they oh, got their diploma. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could hand them their diploma. One time, Bob Heine stood in for you. They, that, uh, after, after I retired, I retired from everything because, to tell you the truth, I didn't feel good and I didn't know why, and uh, uh, doctors knew a lot more than they told us, and uh, all my friends, or a lot of my friends were dying from colorectal cancer. And then when I found out I had it, uh, it, it really, it, it was hard to take for a while, so but green. I got through with it. And uh, at St. Vincent's up in Indianapolis, and they, they, they just did a great job, and uh, I'm still around. Oh, your group started the trustee room, too. Started what, honey? The trustee room here in the union. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, was good. I was going to ask you in, in closing any reminiscences or notes that you'd like to make. We it's had a room in your court. out on the north end of the union, second, second floor, I think, something like that. But it was a long walk to get there, but it was very nice. And it was big enough for what we wanted. We just wanted a meeting place, and we had our rooms around it where we stayed all night, you know, and our wives union. could meet there. In the union? In the union. Okay. Our wives could meet there while we were in the meeting, and uh, we got to know each other better and very nice and enjoyed it. They played a game called Black and Gold. Yeah, the fraternity and residence halls. That yeah. was fun. Yeah, uh, it really was a rough game. Well, it was a basketball goal with a hole in it, and you had to throw the football through it. And we didn't need a referee because there were no rules. <laughs> That's the best game, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So all no I rules. knew was I it, it didn't like it. Seemed to me it, it worked fine and. Uh, well, how did back to the trustee room? Did you pick? There was a you picked out a special room. And prior to that, there wasn't one. Is that what mm -hmm. you were referring yes, to? Yes, there okay. wasn't one. We just met in different places. They or? fixed it up, took okay. the beds out, and put in oh, chairs it used to be, and furniture. Oh, okay. So it was just for a meeting, a meeting room. Um, then. Yeah, yes. just to socialize. Because I remember the first one was kind of an L, where they had put football players to sleep the night in bunk beds. Probably. They took them out and fixed it up. Yeah. Okay. Good. It, it, it worked fine because we could get together and talk about what we were going to do and what we should and shouldn't do, and, and it took a burden off of the staff. 
because they didn't have to meet as long and we could get things going. It, it, made the, it made the meetings a little smoother and faster if we would go through sure. what we were thinking about anyway. Right. So then they moved it from where we left it. I guess it's up on the third floor, but they brought it down towards the Union. They have a room now. I was in there once, uh, and it's much bigger and nicer, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure they need it. Any, any further comments, any observations that you'd like to share with the researchers? Anything comes to mind? Jeanette, your wife, anything? I just think it was a wonderful experience with all those nice people and, this, and the uh, professors and the people we met here at Purdue. We got to know a lot of professors and a lot of people because they'd be on committees. Uh, I remember we had one that was uh, about alcohol consumption in fraternities and houses and around and uh, not being guilty at all <laughs> of any such abnormal things. A good listener. <laughs> and they. They had somebody on that committee that didn't know what he was talking about from the staff. And uh, it, it, we, were, we were just kind of laughing because we knew things had changed and were changing. And, but we couldn't figure out, couldn't put our finger on exactly what or how to do it. And it, it, it just didn't, it, it didn't give itself an answer easily. And we put it under the rug someplace and didn't do much. And uh, the president did things and uh, it worked pretty good for a while. But I understand now it's uh, <laughs> beginning to show up again. It's hard when there are different ages, right? It is. It is. I, I wouldn't be for that. Uh, 18 year old drinking. I, I don't think we need that and I I think it's a, something that that a few people misuse and they get a lot of notoriety out of it be my opinion. I, I know that uh, John Hicks thought about it a lot and worked on it and John did a lot of things, and Earl Butts was uh, was really a help. We had a professor at the university that had been here quite a few years and was just ideal and fine gentleman. And all of a sudden, he started writing, uh, I would say uh, dirty poems and dirty books and that, and we didn't need that. And of course he had uh, tenure. And we moved his office and gave him a chance to leave. And we bought back his contract and Earl ran that. Earl Butts clicked, and we, we, we raised the money to do it just quietly and efficiently and quick, and Earl took care of it, and the guy was gone. And I don't think there's a university over in there, St. Louis, that I don't think they think too highly of us. <laughs> okay. You didn't tell them the truth. I, I don't think they told them the whole truth. They might have said the truth, but they weren't... Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have liked it. Well, it got worked out. Yeah, but there's some things that uh, it's better not to bring up at a meeting and just get it done. You know right from wrong. You know good from bad. Get off your duff and get it done. Uh, yeah, it it uh, worked fine, but we had such a nice group of uh, people helping. I'm sorry you can't interview the he Bob Heine. Yeah. yeah. He loved Purdue. Right. Yeah, Bob I mean, was more sold serious. on Purdue than anything I, anyone I know. He, he was really shot in the arm, but he did a lot, and 
he had a lot of experience with large organizations because he was a, Lily. I would say, a big shot with Lily, and just a prince of a guy. And it it helped the rest of us because he knew so many things that we didn't really right. know. A guy Wilson was a good trustee, I thought, and uh, he kept putting everybody on the ball. To, you know, you did this last year. Now you got to come around and change yeah, this. This this is not working right. And because he was a trustee, and then he was off for a few years, and then he came back, so he knew how to skate, and we didn't. <laughs> it's a good thing to have that. So yeah. he really helped us. He was down to earth. Yeah. yeah. He, you just didn't uh, get by with much with him. Mm -hmm. He understood uh, all of the execs in the because he knew them before and he knew things they had done then. He said, well, a few years back you were doing this and this and this and now what are we doing? And uh, <laughs> It, it, it all came out, yeah. came out fine. Good resource person. Mm -hmm. Mr. Grant, well, I want to thank you very much for this. This has been really well, nice. Really nice. I hope it works really out. really has. And Jeanette, I appreciate that too. Yeah.